Hey you, Kaiser coming at you today with another Let's Talk. Uh, today I wanted to talk about goal setting. Uh, before we begin, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll keep this stuff up. Now with the new upcoming season on May 1st, uh, setting goals and knowing how to achieve them are very important. Once we reach the new season, everyone will start back from zero and we're going to have to climb all back up. Uh, this is a period of time where if you queue in right at the beginning of the season, you're very likely to be placing in very high dragon, well, last season dragon lobbies because everyone's the same rank. Uh, this can be good or bad for you depending on what you want to get out of the game. And it's also part of the reason why it's really difficult to recommend characters to new players, right? If I don't know your goal, like let's say you're a new player and you want to hit dragon, or you want to play at the highest level, meaning you want to go further than just dragon. Do you want to be the best uh, Leon player, for example? Do you want to be able to play multiple masteries? Do you want to play with friends? Uh, if I know what your goal is, I'm better able to make an informed decision on what character to recommend you, for example, right? So like, let's say that your only goal is to hit dragon, you just started your herbivore, right? I can be like, okay, I can point you in the direction for the fastest way, right? I can give you a list of like characters that are good as of right now, that could change. And I could also say things like, you know, you should play one character and you should only play one mastery. And the reason why this is something that's suggested to people who want to play at like high dragon or at the highest level is because when you're picking up this game, a lot of this game has to do with, uh, let me turn down this volume because it's bothering me. <laughs> a lot of this game has is more about how much you know about the game rather than your mechanical skill, right? At least until you hit the highest level and even at the highest level, if you don't know enough about the game, your speed is not going to matter. You'll notice this a lot when I play against Korean players who can play faster than me, that can hit me twice as fast, but because their game knowledge is just not that good, I'm still able to pull ahead of them. So. The reason why you want to play just one character and one mastery, so like, let's just say hand, right? If I play just one character and one mastery, I don't have to go out of my way to learn every single weapon in the game. I don't have to go out of my way to learn how to play every character in the game, right? And I can just focus on getting better at that one character and learning, spending more time learning the mechanics of the game rather than spending more time learning the mechanics of multiple different characters and weapons and all those different choices, right? So it's reducing the total amount of stuff you have to learn helps a lot when you're trying to play at a high level. I personally, when I went into this game, I saw high level Twitch streamers playing and I was like, hey, I wanna play at that level. So I picked Hyunwoo, I played only Hyunwoo for two years, and I got to where I am. This may not be realistic for a lot of people, maybe you don't have the time to put into the game, and honestly that's totally valid, but you have to understand that this is like what it takes to accomplish some of these goals, right? And so the best way to break down how to accomplish these kinds of goals, because let's face it, even if you do main one character, you might never hit dragon, and there could be a variety of reasons of that. Uh, I think the biggest is that people aren't breaking down that goal into achievable steps in order to achieve that goal, right? So like, one of the things that I noticed that a lot of people do is they'll just like spam games. And honestly, spamming gr games is great if you want to improve your mechanics, right? The more you practice, the better your mechanics are going to be. But as I said earlier, uh, game knowledge it counts for a lot more than mechanics in this game in particular. Like mechanics help. And they start to matter a lot more at High Dragon, but until you're there, game knowledge is far more important and will help you get much further than any mechanics you can get. So the first thing that you need to be doing if you wanted to like hit High Dragon, for example, right, is you need to say, okay, I need to set several goals, right? I need... Obviously, the obvious ones is I need to hit Fox, then I need to hit Wolf, then I need to hit 
fair, you know, th those are obvious small steps and those kind of help your, like, how you approach this. But another thing that you need to realize is that when you're starting out, you need to be focusing on uh, learning the game as much as possible and focusing on what can I do better. Uh, a good way to do this, and this will cause you to lose games, is to experiment and to experiment a lot. You have to be comfortable with the fact that you're going to be losing a lot of games when you're trying to learn new things. That's just how it is. If you spend every single game just doing the same routes, like let's say we go Iron Knuckle, we go Trail every single game, uh, and we build the same armor every single game, same weapon, you're not going to learn anything. You're just going to learn how to do that one route, and that's all you know how to do. And then you die the moment you get contested, and then if you tell yourself, oh, there was nothing I can do, you're doing yourself a huge disservice, right? When I was playing Han Wu, when I was hard maining him, I was starting everywhere, even places that were considered stupid at the time, including Tunnel, right? Tunnel was considered to be really stupid because at the time, uh, where was it? Uh, Shatter Shell Gauntlet was really bad. Right now it's okay. But by doing that, I started learning where all the different materials are. I learned how to build a lot of things, and I started understanding how to flex. And by forcing myself into situations that I am unfamiliar with, I learned how to build new armor items. I learned how to build new food. Uh, a really good thing to do is to constantly browse the index. It's now called experiments. And just go through these and learn them. Right? If you don't learn how to build things, you're going to come across situations where you're just never going to be able to do it. <laughs> and you're just putting yourself behind for no reason. Uh, a good start, if you haven't already, is to learn all the mithril armor. Mithril is a pretty plentiful random resource in the game, and it can get you access to a lot of really fast armor. And in some uh, weapon types, and get you fast weapons too. Uh, even the axe of... Pangu is a good example of like something that a lot of blade users don't use, but they should be aware of the option. Uh, what else? Excuse me, I can't speak today. Uh, another thing that people should pay attention to are the special items. Uh, a lot of people jumping onto my stream, they're like, what the heck is Searing Palm Scroll? What the heck is Wizard Fishing Pole? What's Adrenaline Drink? Why are you building these items I never see anyone build? And the reality is that nobody builds them because they never check the index and they're never aware that these are things they can do. Uh, another thing people don't know they can do is they can use Meteor Steel to enhance blade weapons. But nobody does it. <laughs> It's one of those things where it's like, if you don't browse the index, you're never going to know you can do these things. Uh, the Black Survival Wiki is also really helpful because the Black Survival Wiki has uh, information the exact percent chance uh, that the Meteor Steel enhances your weapon. So that's like another thing to keep in mind of. Um, so, excuse me, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. I should mention that you can hit Dragon on pretty much any character. There are Dragon 1 JP mains, and JP is considered the weakest character right now. Uh, hack JP mains, not even like Battle JP, right? So, if you can hit Dragon 1 on this character, you can hit Dragon 1 on any character. And it's just a matter of mindset, how much you're willing to learn the game, and how far you're going to go. Uh... You could probably hit Dragon 1 on Trap Soul. I know it's been done. It's harder. <laughs> People get better at countering you as you climb up, but that's kind of the general gist. Uh, before I go, I would like to give a couple recommendations to people that want simple characters. Because uh, there, there's pretty much a simple character for every mastery that kind of lets you, helps you get started. So, for example, both Hyunwoo and Leon are very simple character and straightforward characters that are good for hand. Uh, for Blunt, Rosalio is my suggestion. He's also very straightforward. For Blade, I would recommend either Yuki or Kiara, both of which have very straightforward kits. For Stab, I would probably suggest either Shoichi or Mai. They're very straightforward characters as well. For Throw, uh... 
I actually recommend William, but then switching off of William later throws a little bit of the weird one. So, William is incredibly straightforward and he gives you extra stamina, and that extra stamina helps you when you're first learning the game because when you're first learning the game, you're not going to be good at making stamina. That's just reality. And having William take care of that weakness for you really helps you when you're first learning. Once you get really familiar and comfortable in stamina, I recommend playing any of the other characters just because William is not that good. Uh, even Emma is like she Emma and Cecilia are both fairly straightforward uh for gun I probably recommend Aya or Ratsi Aya and Ratsi seem the most straight it, honestly like when it comes to gun a lot of the characters are very straightforward like Aya Ratsi even Bernice it's just kind of like you build weapon you kill people and that's kind of just it <laughs> and for Bo uh my recommendation for Bo actually goes to Arda very simple, straightforward kit. Nadine, a lot of people go for because Nadine is kind of like a newbie pub stomper. But the reality about Nadine is that she's very stamina dependent and she's animal control dependent. Uh, Nadine is good for picking up when you want to get used to animal control. But what ends up happening if you rely on Nadine too much for her animal control is you rely on this ability and you don't actually learn how to animal control properly. So playing Nadine actually handicaps you and puts you into a situation where it can just be very difficult to learn how to an animal control. Oh. And taking her handicap off actually helps you improve in the long run. Now, obviously, you could just play Nadine or any of the, the other characters all the way up to Dragon 1, but those are the simplest and easiest to learn. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this guide, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.